Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome to episode 4 of Seasons at Oakfield Farm for Farming Simulator 19. Uh, where this morning, uh, spring most definitely seems to be in the air. Uh, the hedges are looking a little bit brighter and the first signs of new growth are apparent on the trees. And from reading some of the patch notes for Seasons 19, uh, it turns out that the transitions between the seasons are going to be a little bit more gradual than they were uh, for seasons 17. Uh, now I do have to say that personally I wasn't really too bothered about the sudden change of the leaves but hey it is nice to take note of you know the amount of depth that has been added into the seasons mod. So anyway, we are on the road once again very early this morning. In fact, heading out before I've even had a chance to check on the livestock. Uh, because we have a contract to do a little bit of cultivating on, I think, field number 17, uh, which is somewhere down in the southeast corner of the map. Uh, not entirely sure how to get there, but I do think that this uh, road here uh, should take us in the right direction. And as far as I am aware from the map, uh, field 17 uh, should be that brown field uh, just across that hedgerow. Uh, though it does not seem that there is any way of accessing it from this road. Uh, now I do think there is a field track a little further up along here. And hopefully it's a case that that will bring us down towards the field. Uh, admittedly I haven't done a lot of exploring on this side of the map. A bar passing through uh, when I first got hold of Oakfield. And it looks like this might be the field track that I am looking for. Uh, so let's just back up a little bit and try to take this turn. Uh, hopefully field number 17 is down here. Uh, a quick glance at the map uh, does seem to show that I am in the right place. Uh, so I'm going to go down anyway and have a little bit of a look and if it's a case that we need to come back out I'm sure we will find somewhere to turn around. And yeah, down towards the end of this field track is indeed the place that we are looking for. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get the cultivator unfolded and I'll probably end up taking off a couple of headlands and then basically put it onto a worker to continue because yeah I've got a couple of jobs that I need to get done this morning uh, including taking a look at the cattle and making a start on sowing out some of our own fields and after making a couple of passes I decided that it would actually be quicker and a little bit easier uh, if I was just to take a couple of strips off the top and bottom of the field uh, just to give the worker a little bit of room to spin around and go up and down the field again uh, because the sides are relatively straight and you know he should be able to follow along pretty well. Uh, so let's just get ourselves rolling on this and then we can allow the worker to take over and complete the rest of the field for us. Now we're not going to make a huge amount of money out of this contract but I did want to try and get it out of the way uh, because another contract has spawned on field number 36 where we were working yesterday and it turns out that it is valued at about 13,000. Now it is going to be a fertilizing contract uh, so it's a case that yeah we're probably going to end up spending a little bit of money on a fertilizer today but you know we should still be able to make a decent amount of money out of this. So yeah I'm going to jump back to the main farm at this stage and start taking care of our livestock. So yeah a quick scan through the cattle uh, does seem to reveal that some of the Holsteins are in fact with calf. Uh, at least one of them is. And yeah, that is a little bit interesting. Uh, the grass is also starting to grow in the field, uh, which means that they now have access to a tiny amount of grazing. And so it might be a case that uh, in the coming episodes, I end up cutting back the amount of power food that I'm actually giving them uh, because I don't want them to become overweight either. So yeah, I am going to uh, basically take care of these animals 
and then head up to our own crop fields and start a little bit of sowing out up there and yeah just before i do uh take care of the cattle i did want to show off this persistent bug that i've been having with this coon mixer wagon uh in that every time i log out of the game and come back in it seems to be sitting here churning away uh, despite not being attached to a tractor which is a little bit interesting and uh, to be honest i should probably check on the mod hub to see if there is an update for this uh mixer wagon at this stage uh, to be honest it is just a visual bug it doesn't seem to affect the utility of the machine uh, so yeah it's not critical if uh, it doesn't get fixed anyway onward we go and with the cattle fed and watered it is at last time to get out onto the crop fields and start a little bit of sowing on the fields that we limed out yesterday uh, now i did miss a few patches here and there but uh, i'm not really going to split hairs on it since you know germination may be a little bit patchy anyway uh, so yeah i did have a little bit of a problem with the a lime spreader and uh, yet yeah, just it seems that we have actually completed the contract on field number 17 uh, so I am actually going to stop the worker because uh, it's a case that he is going to be costing us extra money uh, to get that finished and yeah I mean probably we should you know uh, complete these contracts but um, yeah that's good enough for me and as I say, there is a fertilizing contract on field number 36 that I am interested in getting into today. So, uh, yeah, we are going to accept that and uh, probably end up purchasing a little bit of fertilizer later on. Uh, I think for now, I'm going to end up leaving the case sitting here in the field uh, while I continue with the sewing. Uh, now, yes, as I was saying, once I was getting ready to return the lime spreader yesterday evening, uh, I decided that I might as well try to unload the little bit of lime that was left uh, sitting in the machine before returning it. Uh, unfortunately, the pallet for that seemed to disappear, uh, and I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. Uh, it did unload, but the pallet is nowhere to be found. So I'm guessing it either glitched into something down on the farm or glitched under the map or something like that. Uh, so it's a case that if I do go lime spreading again, I may enter that area to just to see if I can refill it. Um, so yeah, as I'm making my way around the first headland, you're also going to be noticing that I have had one of my trademark changes of heart and uh, yeah we are in fact sowing oats rather than wheat uh, the reason for that is that it seems on the market oats is a little bit more valuable than wheat uh, though it may end up balancing out for us because i'm not entirely sure what kind of a yield we will be getting out of this when compared with wheat but yeah bigger numbers are kind of attractive to me and yeah i decided we might as well go for oats uh, it also has the advantage of us not sowing oats on the field across the way because or not sowing wheat on the field across the way rather because uh, last year's crop was in fact wheat um granted we are sowing still sowing a cereal crop so that's not really going to affect the crop rotation and yeah that is something i still have to have a look at anyway i think we are going to jump into a little bit of a time lapse for this uh, process and i will join back up with you a little bit later on to see how we are getting on
and so first field complete and we have used up pretty much the full container of seed in the hopper uh, which is not really a major concern we do still have a couple of bags left on pallets uh, which I have taken the liberty of bringing up here before I started uh, now I did say in one of the previous episodes that I was going to have to end up cultivating this field before sowing it out uh, because during testing when I was kind of you know having a look at the map and having a mess about with it uh, it turned out that I wasn't able to sow over the stubble with this cedar and that was a little bit strange because it did say in the shop that no previous cultivation or plowing was required for this since it is a direct drill and as it turns out uh, yeah that is in fact how it works and yeah I'm not entirely sure what went wrong when I was messing about with this before uh, I'm guessing I may have fat fingered the keys and accidentally switched off the sore without knowing or something like that uh, but in any case it is working perfectly now uh, so yeah I am going to refill on seed and fertilizer and then start taking out a couple of headlands and I think I'm going to let the worker do the most of this field uh, though he or she is going to have a little bit of trouble with the island of trees and grass in the middle of the field but it's a case that I think they will just avoid that area and end up leaving a blank patch somewhere. And then I will have to come along and deal with myself, uh, which is not a huge issue. And yeah, once this is rolling, what I'm going to end up doing is cutting back to the case and picking up some fertilizer and heading down to field number 36 to get that taken care of for a cool £13,000. So a little bit later, I have, of course, taken off a couple of headlands and... Yeah, I've done a little bit extra down at the far end of the field just to be sure that the worker will not have any trouble at all. And uh, yeah, so far so good. He seems to be uh, well on his way. Uh, just taking a quick look to make sure that he is not going to be refilling on seed and costing me any extra money uh, before I let him have at this. Now yeah, he is going to be taking a little bit of an unusual path uh, across the field uh, just because it is not exactly a straight field and I wanted to make sure uh, that he ends up covering as much ground as possible. So this here is the big test to see if he will uh, do the logical thing and sort of turn around and come back and meet up with the piece that he has already covered. And so far, so good. It looks as though he is going to do that. Uh, so yeah, it looks like uh, she is well on her way on the field and I think at this stage I am going to just let her get on with it and uh, switch back to the case and go and pick up some liquid fertilizer and fill up our sprayer and go down to field 36 and do a little bit of a contract down there. Uh, so first I do have to get the cultivator back to the firm. Uh, which has been sitting in the field all afternoon. And as it turns out, fertilizer, or at least liquid fertilizer, is a little bit more expensive than I remembered. Um, so yeah, that probably does explain why the contract is valued at 13,000. So yeah, the John Deere is of course still sowing out oats on our field. And so rather than, you know, taking it off and loading up these pallets on a trailer, I decided I might as well bring the sprayer down to the shop and just refill in the yard. Um, so yeah, it's only going to be a quick drive up the road, uh, so long as I don't end up colliding with everything along the way. And uh, yeah, I'm going to unfold and start spraying out that field for our dear friend, Mason Newton. And so yeah, I think luck is really on our side when it comes to Oakfield Farm because yeah, this sprayer really does have uh, quite a substantial working width and kind of means that when I start laying in tram lines on our own fields, uh, you know that we're not going to actually be ending up losing a whole lot of crop. 
uh, I do think it is nicer to put in the tram lines and you know once the crop starts to grow because it is a little bit thicker than it was in FS17 it does mean that it's a little bit difficult to see where you are actually covering so yeah spring when the crop is young uh, you can kind of see what you're covering and yeah really all you have to do is follow some tram lines you know with whatever other application you are going to be putting out uh, or at least that's the way I like to do it anyway uh, you'll also notice uh, that on field 36 at the moment uh, there are a couple of patches of weeds sprouting and I have to say that I really am happy that season's overhauled the weed system because yeah in the base game the entire field getting covered in weeds overnight is yeah another little pet peeve of mine. And yeah, partway through the contract, of course, the worker runs out of a seed and fertilizer. So, yeah, I basically take him back to the trailer and refill on both. And yeah, it seems that we have actually run out of solid fertilizer at this stage. Uh, though I don't think we're actually going to need any more for this season. Uh, unless, of course, we purchase a little bit for a contract or something like that. Uh, because, yeah, we're going to basically end up using a liquid fertilizer. Uh, the hope is, of course, that we end up uh, having a small amount of this fertilizer left over once we get this contract complete. And unfortunately, because of the shape of the field, as you can see, uh, I am going to end up wasting a little bit here and there as I kind of cover the thinner areas. And if I had really been thinking about it, I might have approached spraying this a little bit differently and basically try to uh, you know accommodate the shape and make sure that my kind of overlap wasn't as extreme as it is in this situation here but anyway yeah eventually I do get enough of the field sprayed uh, to complete the contract and uh, yeah much like I have been doing with the contracts recently I just decide to uh, complete it at this point uh, because yeah I want to try and hold on to a little bit of this a really rather expensive fertilizer and before moving on I decided to take another contract for field 27 to do a little bit of sewing uh, which will probably be something I end up doing tomorrow uh, so yeah I think it is time to head back to the farm and have a look at how the worker has got on uh, I did switch to him mid contract this afternoon just to uh, get him set up to take out the tiny little bit near the island that he was missing uh, so yeah it'll be interesting to see how the field is looking after his attempt at sewing it out and it does seem that he has done a pretty thorough job of uh, you know taking care of that field for us and having a look at the map it does appear as though field number one has a second stage fertilization on it, which is a little bit interesting. Uh, that must mean that not only was it cultivated when we got it, but there must have been a layer of fertilizer on there as well. Uh, unless, of course, the cultivating helped it in some way. Not entirely sure. I may look back over some of the footage and see uh, what exactly was up with that field at the time. Anyway, time to get this equipment back down to the security of the farm. I mean, this is a relatively quiet road up here, but, you know, you don't really want to be leaving tractors kind of lying about in case, you know... Uh, some passerby decides they want to have a mess about with the tractor after a night in the pub or something. Uh, so yeah, going to round these up and bring them down to the farm and store them in a shed somewhere. And yeah, once down at the farm, I decide that I might as well unload the cedar. Yeah, basically create a couple of big bags of seed and more importantly, uh, unload the bag of fertilizer because yeah, I mean, we are going to be going seeding tomorrow with the cedar uh, for, our, for once again, for Mason Newton, but it's a case that I don't want to end up wasting fertilizer on his field. And so just a quick check on the cattle before we head for bed. And it does seem 
uh, that two of my Holsteins are now expecting a calf. Uh, so yeah, I was apparently completely wrong on how and when the actual artificial insemination takes place. Uh, so yeah, definitely some things that need to be learned. And so with the day kind of coming to an end, um, and I don't think I'm going to end up doing a hell of a lot uh, this evening, uh, I think that I'm going to take this opportunity to once again say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.